Okay, this community post is not um, fake. I haven't actually played Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord in about six months. And for someone whose pretty much entire career was built off the title, I think I probably should come back. In this video, I'm going to go through some of the biggest changes that the game has been through in the last six months since I've been gone, and of course, all the most beautiful mods that have recently come out. I actually had a go at a multiplayer game last night. Let me just say my first time back after six months was not the most successful of games. Piss off, ghost. Ouch. A spiker will kill them in one hit, because I've got a military spike. <laughs> I'm being abused badly. The game at least still has a decent sized player base. I mean, having tens of thousands of concurrent players every evening for a title that is still pretty niche is very impressive. And whilst I think a lot of them will be playing the single player, the multiplayer servers are still fairly thriving. Yeah! Don't mind me, just a man with a pole. I need a out bigger pole. This pole isn't big enough for the both of us. Pole isn't big enough for the both of us. It's big enough to kill you though, sir. I have friends and you do not because I killed them all in a fiery pit. Get knocked over. I need more friends, I have decided. I need more friends. Yeah. But there is some insanely big news that came out of Battlelords multiplayer, and that wasn't necessarily the multiplayer itself, but it was some information or at least some press surrounding it. What is Bannerlord Persistent Empires and why it's worth playing? So it was a pretty bitch. Just two weeks ago, one of the biggest Twitch streamers on the platform, Asmon Gold started watching Battlelord videos. And I mean, good job to everybody that made good enough videos for him to watch, because boy, did it work. I mean, some of these reactions made by a pretty- Can they make this castle or is this castle just existing in the world? It's pre-existing, okay. Oh my God, that's insane. Look at that. Holy, f dude, this is insane. Look at them all. Go, 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 go. What the fuck? Come on, you DL dogs. This is huge. And, and like it's not even laggy. But seriously, when the gameplay hits, it hits so fucking good. Like because of this, they hopped in Banlord and uploaded on a video with over with almost 400,000 views now is how we broke Banlord. Within it, Asmon Gold goes on with most of his Twitch stream, and it is probably one of the most impressive persistent empires sites ever. Persistent Empires was the only way this game was going to get this kind of press. The big open world multiplayer game where everybody was part of a thriving MMO world. Okay, not really MMO, but in terms of what Asmongol's audience would like, it's probably the closest. Everybody fighting between these castles, having their own clans, and of course role-playing. I think one of the main things that surprised me with Banlord Persistent Empires was the introduction of voice over IP. You see, it was something that I was terrified of, but I think it has made this game go from a pretty popular game with the Mountain Blade fan base to something that is becoming more and more mainstream. And Persistent Empires has gone from strength to strength. So I decided I'd go back and check it out after a long, long time. Let's right, just set up my recording. Okay. Already. What is going on here? It's like I'm in a mental home. 
Oh god. I really should have changed my name. Hi, Kingdom of England, guys. It's been a while. <laughs> Please don't bully me. Thank you. Can I... Can I get out? I want to go and explore. Just a little bit. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. No respect. What's going... Oh, God. Don't hurt me. Oh, shit. Oh, God. It's resonant. Oh, my... Oh, it's you! <laughs> my god, that's been ages. I, I, I don't have you on Steam anymore, what the fuck? Yeah, that's... You removed me on Steam. That's because I removed a lot of people on Steam. <laughs> come, come with me, come. Okay, sure. And as long as you don't bully me or put me in a, some sort of sex dungeon. <laughs> oh shit, it's fucking resonant. Fuck me. Oh shit, they just declared that. Run well, in, run looks in. like we're going to war at the time I decided to make friends with Northumbria. Good job, mate. <laughs> Alright boys, let's fuck them up. I feel like I'm somewhere that I shouldn't be behind the enemy lines. Oh, I have nothing. Please. I, I, I don't take sides here. I just want Northumbria to win because if they don't, I'm screwed. Because as soon as these Templar lads get in, they're going to see me as part of the defending side. Hold them back, lads, please. Oh, God. I think we might be holding them though. Uh, okay, there is there is very high chances that I could be stored. I can't get in the store. I don't have keys. I'm just gonna have to hope for the best because I also do not have a weapon. Oh my god, there's so many of them around it. More reinforcements, please. Please help me. Okay, I think they're actually pushing them back. I might not be dead today. I might survive. Fucking easy, bro. Don't mind me. Finding some stuff on the floor. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm rich. What happened to Arcade Knight, by the way? Do you know? It's because, like, we thought he died. He should stop uploading. When it comes to single player, there have been some improvements and changes, especially in the modding scene. Realm of Thrones was one of my favourite mods back in the day, and it seems to have gone from strength to strength, being updated non-stop. I mean, these developers have done some incredible stuff, bringing Game of Thrones into the Mountain Blade world. Not only do we have the full Westeros and Essos in terms of our custom maps, but we've got all the 21 new cultures. We've also got mercenary clans and... Well, White Walkers, with some interesting new additions since I last played. One of the most. Goddamn dragons. Let's just hope that these guys do not have any kind of ranged attack. I don't think they do, right? I don't think they do, so this should be relatively simple for us to actually... I mean, it should be the simplest thing in the world, shouldn't it? We yes, really Mr. Reformist. Be able to completely what dominate the, the hell is going on? Because they don't have any range. Yeah, as far it. as I'm aware, they don't have any range at it's all. It's just mental. Someone actually mentioned a long time ago when I was doing my previous series of Realm of Thrones, and you said something it's like... It's just Vietnam in um, Best way of count. Okay, dragons in Game of Thrones makes complete sense, and it also makes complete sense that they're overpowered as hell. I'm just still slightly baffled that this is the Mountain Blade game that we got in 2020. You know, the game that people were somewhat disappointed with, it seems modders have managed to turn this around so much. But that kind of brings me on to the base game itself and why I stopped playing. You see, Mountain Blade 2 Banlord, at least for the single player for me, became overworked. I started to feel like the only reason I was playing it was for videos and to try and work something out of it. To try and find enough content within this title to keep it interesting and in doing so realised that the pit had run dry. So I took a step back and boy am I glad I did. Because coming back to Mountain Blade 2 Battle Lord now, there is a plethora of new mods, content, whether it's multiplayer or single player to actually get my hands on. But what has actually changed from Tail Worlds? What's been going on with them in the last six months? Well, if I'm going to be honest, it actually looks like Tail Worlds took the same amount of time off as I did five months ago. What about the actual Steam itself? Uh, Mountain Blade 2 Battle Lord. Okay. Oh, we got a community. No. Community Tales. Interesting. What if we go to their actual page, their store page? Maybe we'll find something more on there. Oh, yep. Shut up, Tailwords. Look, we know you've got cool trades. See? 
view all the latest updates. Autumn sale, weekend sale, community to ah, we've got a patch notes. September, I missed something. Okay, to promote some YouTubers, an event. What about the what about the patch? The patch notes. Aha, there we go. Fixed crashes, fixed bugs, fixed crashes. Really? That's it? Pricing? So, nothing. There's been one patch that fixed a total of one, two, three, four, five things. What about the discussion page? Has anyone said anything about this? Please add any. <laughs> and this is just it. It doesn't seem like I was the only one that took some time away. It seems like Tailwoods have done the same. Or have they? You see, there are two possibilities here. The first one is that they truly believe they have finished with Banlord. They have fully updated it and patched it to every spec that it needed to be. And that could be true. I think in terms of the game now, it is in a fully functional state where you're able to get thousands of hours of playtime out of it. Not just with its native base vanilla, but even with all the mods that are coming out. Whether it's Eagle Rising, the Lord of the Rings mods that's on its way, or even your multiplayer such as Persistent Empires or Full Invasion 3. There is so much to grasp and so much to get your hands on that you can fully match your Mountain Blade Warband play hours with Banlord now. But I don't think it is that. I think there is something bigger on the horizon. You see, Banlord has, I think, been officially a success for Tailwords. And whilst it's been a bumpy few years since its release, having ups and downs and plenty to talk about, whether it's adding in modding tools a little bit later or not patching out some of the issues that the single player had, I genuinely think Tailwords are happy with the state of the game. So what is this next bit of content coming? Well, I think this could be the start of where we start to hear something to do with DLCs. Expansions, much like Mountain Blade Warband had. Now, the unfortunate thing is the gaming landscape has changed so much. How much? Well, expansions and DLCs aren't really a thing anymore. The only people really still championing in it are games like RimWorld or, of course, your big AAA stuff like The Witcher. But even then, 2015 was a long, long time ago. Are big expansions still in demand? I think they are. I think game companies just don't see them as profitable, but Tailworlds is small enough to the fact that they hopefully won't sell into these microtransactions and small, tiny little paid updates like even games like Hell Like Loose are leading into now. But they are also big enough to be able to wait long enough that they've earned enough money from Banlord and its sales so far that they can hold back. That they can stop releasing patch notes and finally come out with something bigger, whether it is a full expansion. Of course, in Warband, we got Napoleonic Wars and Viking Conquest. We also got Fire and Sword, which is kind of the forgotten DLC, but for understandable reasons. Yet, what's coming in Banlord? Will they just do a repeat? I think the Napoleonic Wars is probably off the table, since modders are doing a fantastic job with that. And I kind of am getting the point that Napoleonic Wars isn't quite as in demand in Banlord as it was with Warband. But maybe that's just because in Warband it was officially supported by Tail Wars. So an official Napoleonic Wars DLC for Banlord would, I think, still do pretty well. Whether it's going to come? Probably not. They probably don't want to retread the same kind of stuff that they've done before. So we could be getting something entirely different. I personally would love something more along the terms of Ancients. We've been into the world of gunpowder with Tail Wars moving forward in history. Why can't they go back a little bit? Maybe there could be some sort of official Roman DLC or even something along the Peloponnesian Wars, unexplored by Banlord modders at least in a big way at this point in time. We've had small snippets of Sparta, the Battle of the Mopoli within Mountain Blade 2 Banlord with mods, but something a bit more official, something more stable and more heavily supported, that could really change the game a lot. But it is an interesting thought of why Tailwords have stopped updates, why the official support of Banlord has started to at least be more behind the scenes than it was before. Is this because they are coming to the end of their support for the game? I don't think so. I definitely think Banlord still has at least a half a decade left in it in terms of the updates that Tailwords are bringing for it. So whatever they're planning, it's got to be something big. Because six months with hearing nothing from the developers themselves isn't insignificant.